Think Realty Nation, it's your host, Avi Golhar. Welcome to the Think Realty Podcast. So if you've ever wondered how to rank for stuff on Google and how to show up, like number one, two, three, four, five in Google, using local uh, keywords and uh, really like being hyper-local and then optimizing for those keywords, this show is going to be for you. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic, uh, content-rich interview um, with Sean Tiberio, who runs Top Results Consulting. And the key that I really want to impress upon you before we get started is, if you don't have the strategy in place and you're only just sending out yellow letters, you're losing the game online. So think about that. This podcast is brought to you by Real Property Management, which is the largest residential property management franchise in North America, managing tens of thousands of properties for individuals, investors, and institutions throughout the country. Learn more at realpropertymgt.com or call 888-806-7088. So Think Realty Nation, my guest today is Sean Tiberio with topresultsconsulting.com and we're going to uh, hash it out. We're going to go back and forth about what you need to know to be online better. Sean, welcome. What's going on? How's it going today? Good, man. So give us a little background. Who are you? What do you do? Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll just start off by saying this. I am a real estate investor by trade. That's where it all began. That's where it all started. Uh, turned into everything that I do now, guest speaking, uh, I'm an author of a book, and more importantly, the co-founder and CEO of Top Results Consulting, helping people just like your audience show up locally in their, their Google rankings so that they can drive more leads. Awesome. I mean, and we have this conversation uh, with investors and folks that are looking at building their brands, and they go after these generic terms, right? Like real estate, um, buy your house or sell your house, which everybody else is ranking for and everybody else is using. So give me like a step-by-step, -step. one, why should I even care about this? Okay, so that's the one. And number two, give me a couple of steps on what I need to kind of follow, some best practices when I'm blogging or maybe when I'm uh, on YouTube or like, why should, like, how do I show up on search? You, you know what I mean? Like, this is Absolutely. really confusing. We're, let's even take a step back and just talk why, because I think cool. we nailed it let's right there out of the, out of the gate first. Cause that's that we hear that all the time. Like, why do I even need to focus on this? I'm right. sending out yellow letters. I'm putting out banded signs and that's what every other gurus told me to do to find leads. And, and I always ask everybody what's going on in the world right now. How, how many people are, are stuck at home, not going out, seeing stuff, uh, thanks to, to what's happening with everything in the, in the COVID space, more and more people are online because they're bored and that's where they've, they've got to go to find their, their, their stuff, right? Their information, uh, which leads me to the second point on why nobody wants to be sold immediately out of the gate. They want to know why they should do business with you. And it's information that moves somebody along. So how do we get our information? How do we get what we've got in front of our ideal audience? We've got to show up in the areas that they're searching for it. And Google, YouTube, these are the place, these are the biggest search engines out there that everybody's on all day long. Yes, social media is a great piece of it, but at the end of the day, somebody's searching something at some point about how do they deal with their situation? How do they get out of the foreclosure? How do they handle the bankruptcy? How do they sell their house the non-traditional way because they don't wanna pay a real estate agent and if you can give them that information, you're going to get their attention. And once you've got somebody's attention, now we can start to convert it over into an actual, you know, viable lead that's, that's worth putting some time into it. So how do we do it? Uh, it, it? Our methodology at Top Results Consulting, we want to focus locally. As a real estate investor, we're doing business in our backyards most of the time. We're doing business in very select uh, maybe counties or cities or towns. I don't need to show up nationally. I, if I'm doing real estate out here in Los Angeles and I'm in the San Fernando Valley, there's you know, five, six areas that I like to look at. I don't care if I'm showing up to somebody in North Carolina or Florida so much. I want to make sure I'm showing up right here. So one thing to do is to really hone in and focus every bit of what you're doing and what's on your website and the blogs that you're writing. And we can get deeper into it if you want. 
into things that are going on locally or using more localized phrases, talking about the stuff that's, that's local to your uh, marketplace. If that, if that starts to get the, the wheels turning, let me know there. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. And I think just kind of going back to the original point is there are a lot of people that will say, a lot of investors that will say, well, I want to attract sellers from all over the country. Well, do you really? Because if you do, I mean, I understand why, because you want more leads and the more leads, the better the opportunity. But if you're buying ads and your keywords are nationwide house buyer, you're paying a top dollar for that keyword to rank and that then becomes a huge marketing expense for what may seem to be a little reward if you're just wholesaling a house for a couple thousand dollars. So being local makes all the difference in the world. If you're in Wichita, if you're in Detroit, if you're in Atlanta, maybe even considering going even more hyper-local into the community itself and saying, I am a, uh, in, in Atlanta, I'm a Kirkwood Atlanta real estate investor and start doing a couple of articles about Kirkwood and then interviewing maybe a couple of business owners. So I, I love that approach because now you're the authority figure in your backyard, which is super, super important, which kind of leads me to my second question, which is the content marketing space is very saturated and clouded with your really big influencers and your micro influencers telling you that you should be sending out seven, eight, nine, ten different posts every single day on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and TikTok, if it's not blocked, but you know, TikTok, uh, if Facebook, and all of these other uh, social media platforms. And that just seems like a brain hemorrhage to do. Who has the time to do this stuff? Like I don't. So how do I create a content marketing plan that serves my business appropriately, but still gives me the time flexibility so I'm not in front of a camera all day? I, I love where you're going. And I wanna add one more piece to why we start local. So give you guys a, a bigger perspective here on every one of our real estate investors websites when we build these things out the strategy for us is we we hone in on six individual locations to begin with and we want to go local and here's why google ranks every single website based on a score even if you're running paid ads your placement of your ad and this is a myth that not a lot of people understand where you show up in the order of your ads is solely based on your authority of a website so if you've got a low authority score and I'm competing against, even though I'm buying the ad and I'm competing against other people with a stronger authority, their ad is going to show up most likely higher than mine. Uh, I might be at the bottom of page one in the ad section that they're starting to use now, not up at the top section. So that's another reason to go local because your local stuff will show up faster than just your main overarching kind of core part of your website. Yeah. And as you build authority, as more things start to rank, more authority comes back to you. And as more authority comes back to your website, to your score, your score starts to climb, more and more things start to grow and show up faster. We get into the ad play game. We have a lot of clients that come to us that want to get into ads and they can't yet because they got to boost their authority, which brings your second point. Content is the fastest way to grow authority online. Social posts, all these people that are running around saying post six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day on, on all these different social platforms. If you've got the time for it, cool, run wild, make it happen. Where a lot of people make a mistake, though, is understanding which platform does what for us. So there's a journey that a, a customer goes through. We call it the customer value journey. And at the bottom two stages, awareness and engagement, that's where they're just, I, I relate it back to dating all the time. I just met this person. I just happened to spot them from across the room. I'm now aware of them. And when I start to engage, that's the small talk, the little conversations that we start to stir up. I haven't even started to ask, do you want to go grab a coffee or go to dinner or anything like that yet? That awareness and engagement stage, your, your customers experience that same exact thing for you. They just randomly found something about you. They're now aware. And the engagement is some of those posts that you're doing. So Absolutely. You got the time to do six, seven, eight, nine of them. You're going to stir up more awareness. You're going to store up more engagement. However, the next step goes to subscribe, meaning they actually want to start conversations deeper than just small talk, a like, a heart, a funny comment to your social post. 
that has to happen where they, they get involved a little bit more. So getting them onto your website, getting them reading blog content, getting them to consume more information, opting in for maybe your weekly series, uh, things like this. And, you know, it could be a podcast, it could be video, or it could be blog. And we push heavily on blogging minimum of four a month. It's, it's kind of the key. One a week is the ideal sweet spot. Now, not everybody's got the time to sit down and write a, a four or five, 600 word blog every single week. So we tell a lot of our clients, if you're consistently doing two a month, one every two weeks, we're going to start to gain some traction. Obviously, the more we do, the better. And the reason why, blogs rank a whole lot faster than a, a website page. And they rank a whole lot faster than just any old keyword. And there's a strategy that we play where your blog content should talk about key topics. I'll give you guys an example. We've got a big client down in Dallas, Texas. And he's got a sole page on his, on his site. Uh, he's, he's now ranked number five on page one for We Buy Houses Dallas, Texas. And it's because for the last two months, we've just pounded content around all the intricate topics of Dallas, Texas real estate. So selling your house in Dallas, Texas. What taxes do you pay when you sell your house? Uh, what's the process? Uh, how to do it without a, a agent? What's ways to, to get top dollar out of it? Tons of blog content around it that are all ranking very well, top one, two, three. And every one of those blogs right. push a link into his Dallas, Texas page. Well, now all of a sudden you start searching, we buy how this Dallas TX and you'll find them in that number five, six, seven spot uh, up there with some of the biggest competitors uh, in the space. And it, again, it goes back to its content. So, so, so it's this web, it's this ecosystem of content that you're creating for a brand, which then skyrockets their influence and reach into the space for those folks that are passing by to say, that's an interesting coat, right? Like maybe I should swing on over and say hi and strike up some kind of conversation. And when they do, you take them to a landing page, throw them a little freebie, and now all of a sudden they're engaged with your brand, which I think is brilliant. So um, we've got to wrap up in here, maybe in a minute or two, but I think the gold nuggets that you've given even so far, are just they're incredible uh, from just like the basic foundational things that a brand needs to do. It's not just, let me go create a LinkedIn page, a website on Wix.com and then leave it at that. There's a lot more work that needs to be done so that you start ranking and then you start to see the results uh, that you really want. And this is a place where, I mean, Sean, you know this, I mean, you're a pro. Th this is a place where, uh, excuse me, a space where it is highly oversold and underdelivered. You have a lot of people that talk the talk in creating content and social media strategy and content marketing strategy, but they just do not walk the walk and the results are terrible, which is why, you know, for me, a top results uh, consulting.com makes a lot of sense, right? Like you're able to help analyze what's really going on. So here's the picture of the brand now, here's the picture of where the brand can be, and here's exactly what you need to do step by step to get there. And I think that's the super coolest thing ever. Um, so from a, from a online business perspective, it makes sense. Like if you don't take advantage of this, you're losing out on easier brand equity than you normally would by doing this yourself. So I, I, I love it. If you were to offer maybe one or two more gold nuggets, what would they be? Uh, you nailed it on the head. It's an ecosystem. We talk about it all the time. You, the bigger your spider web, the yep. more leads you're going to generate. Uh, the more that you're doing online, and this is, quite frankly, it is a, an area of marketing that I think a lot of real estate investors look at it and they go, it makes sense for every other industry but mine. And I, 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 I'm just always dumbfounded for words when I hear that because it's today's day and age is a technology day. And the more you're able to put out there for instant gratification, right? Instant answers. That's why when, when we talk blogs, everybody's like, nobody reads blogs today. Blogging today is not the old fashioned, go write about your life, journal it, that kind of stuff. And, and hope that somebody's going to show up and, and want to read every single week about what you got going on and what, what your cat's doing. Yeah. Blogging today is about answering the questions that your ideal customer has and wants at 1.30 in the morning when they're right. stressed that the bank's about to take their house. And if you can be that person in front of them at that moment, that yellow letter that they get from you later, that 
other form of marketing collateral that hits them is only going to convert that much faster because you're building the trust, you're building the, the awareness, you're getting them to a spot online that we can capture. And the longer we can keep them on our site, reading and seeing and giving these, these great ways for them to answer their own questions, they now want to get on a call. They now actually want to talk to you. They're actually open to having you come out and take a look at their property and talk about what can you do. Yeah. I think that's huge. Sean, this has been awesome. And especially eye-opening for somebody like me that I love my online space. I do a lot online. I blog. I do this, you know, Instagram stuff, LinkedIn stuff. But it's a really good reminder that I should keep blogging and really focusing on some of the keywords. And of course, giving you a buzz at topresultsconsulting.com. Uh, topresultsconsulting.com, right? That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Topresultsconsulting.com. There's a, a bunch of free information that you guys can get out there. Uh, on it and uh, reach out. We, we love working with real estate investors. Awesome. Sean, thanks a lot for the insights, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. You got it. Think Realty Nation, this next segment is brought to you by Clint Coons of Anderson Business Advisors, nationally recognized for providing bulletproof asset protection, tax, and business strategy advice to real estate investors. Get bulletprooftoday.com and receive Clint's book, Asset Protection for Real Estate Investors, for free while supplies last. So here's the thing. We've got this entire pandemic, right? We've, unless you've been living under a rock, you know what's going on in the world right now. And there's so many other things that we have to be paying attention to. But a recent article written by Bruce McNillage um, on thinkrealty.com titled The Good and Bad for Single Family Rentals Post-Pandemic kind of highlights one of the big negatives. And I... You should understand what the positive is. So I'm going to have you go to thinkrealty.com, find this article, and read that part. But I do want to talk about the negative downside for a second. Bruce does say that initially, when we started down this pandemic road, what happened to the overall financing component? It started to go a little haywire, especially your long-term rental, uh, your long-term rental loans. They didn't really stick around, right? They kind of froze up and went away. So. If you're a buy and hold real estate investor, that kind of is not good for you. It kind of sucks. But there's still those investors, there's still these people out there, lenders I mean, that are willing to take a chance on you and lend you that capital. So I will touch on the good news that he talks about, which is, you know, hey, listen, if you are looking at making a smaller investment, maybe a single unit all the way up to four units, you can be a little more conservative with your underwriting. It makes sense. Even if you're buying multiple properties, if you're buying a business, if you're doing something, you can offer that extra level of, well, this might be too much risk. And the good part about that is that homeowners may be interested in taking a little less for their property because of the panic that we're in. So consider that. By no means am I saying take advantage of homeowners. I am saying that if you have the ability to negotiate a little bit based on, let's say, a bad roof, that you might be able to get a little extra. It's part of the negotiation process. But understand what your home seller, the, the current homeowner that you're buying the property from, what is their bottom line, what makes sense for them, and do what you can to meet that. And then go shop it. The benefit that you have right now as a real estate investor is you can go shop those loans, and you can have a good number of people looking at you and you can still get some good rates, though it may not be the same rates as you may have seen in Q1 2020, early, early Q1 2020, but you can still get good rates nonetheless. So give it a shot. If you have any questions, you can get in touch with Bruce as well. You can get in touch with me. Um, find me anywhere online at Abby Golhar or visit me at thinkrealty.com. I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor uh, for the podcast, uh, which is Real Property Management, the largest residential property management franchise in North America, managing tens of thousands of properties for individuals, investors, and institutions throughout the country. You can learn more at realpropertymgt.com or by calling 888-806-7088. Think Realty Nation, I hope you learned a lot about what it takes to really, really win the online game. I believe that you can do it because you have to. Until next time, happy investing.